Every once in a while, a person with bipolar disorder can get quite aggressive and violent. They may even go into a complete rage. And these aggressive outbursts can even be turned towards themselves in the form of suicide. Mm -hmm. And as psychiatry would have it, the reasons for these violent outbursts and suicidal tendencies are because you're mentally ill. But if that were the case, how is it that Ceteria House was able to take care of over 200 people with acute schizophrenia over 12 years, leaving them completely unmedicated? In fact, the book Ceteria reports that only 10 minor injuries happened over that time period among the staff members, and no major injuries at all. And what on earth was John Weir Perry thinking at his clinic Diabasis, where he created a rage room which encouraged people to get in touch with their anger and express it in a controlled and protective setting? So once again, I found myself a little confused. Did bipolar disorder cause violence, aggression, and suicide? Or was something else going on beneath the surface? So, to get a deeper understanding of this problem, I went to my bipolar friends at newlightbeings.com, a social network, and I asked them, what do you think made you violent or aggressive? And in another question, I asked them what made them think of committing suicide, if they had at all. And what I found out from the responses was that, while yes, when the ego collapses and a person goes into psychosis, there is repressed aggression that can occasionally come out. However, for many bipolar people, our aggression doesn't rear its ugly head until we're in the hands of the system that is supposed to be taking care of us. And at least initially, it's usually the system that is a lot more aggressive with us than we are with it. I've never been violent unless you include struggling to get away from the police who are violent to me. Then once hospitalized, the person in psychosis will often find themselves in the middle of a violent, absurd nightmare. The confrontation with the cold and violent reality of the hospital, restraining, chemical and physical prisons, was just not understandable to me. I only became aggressive when trying to defend myself from needles or other perceived threats. When I got to the hospital, I got strapped to a bed, and the doctor came in with a big needle. I started yelling really hard, You are killing me! You are Bush! Speaking personally, I think that my aggression came out of the deep knowledge that I was experiencing something vitally important and sacred, and that my hospitalization was interfering with this process. Or as one new light being described, I believe this rage is some form of primal defense or warning. Try and remove a lion cub from the pride, and the lioness will stop at nothing to kill you. She doesn't display this rage out of love for her cub, no. She's in a rage because you're fucking with evolution. Once through the initial trauma of hospitalization, the bipolar person then has to face their warm and friendly psychiatrist. I got angry in the MD's office with my husband and father. I was trying to talk to my husband and explain my paranoia when the MD told him not to listen to me. That was very insulting and frustrating. It's as if the psychiatric profession has no idea of how sensitive we are when we're in psychosis and how much in need we are of compassion and understanding. I was coming so far from that other dimension that my brain just couldn't manage the information of a world where bad and wrong exist. I was obsessed with the idea of spiritual freedom, and in my view I was being persecuted by the machine in an attempt to suppress me and imprison me in their narrow view of a bleak reality. I felt spiritually raped. And then, if you're lucky enough to get out of the hospital, the medications have an effect all of their own, particularly when you're trying to withdraw off of them. I am certain that my anger, in fact my entire manic episode, was caused when my doctor reduced my meds without proper, gradual tapering. Ritalin is apparently something nobody should go on because it causes uncontrollable fits of rage when it wears off. Effects are an evil poison if there ever was one. The bipolar new light beings also felt that medications had a very strong connection to the suicidal tendencies as well. Feeling like you're poisoning yourself every time you put a chemical clump of crap into your mouth is a slow form of suicide in some ways, isn't it? It was for me. To me, the reasons for wanting to kill yourself are much more complex. 
But the relationships to meds can be a hell of a good trigger. But it's not only the world of psychiatry that can make us violent, angry, and suicidal. It's the way we're received by our friends and family as well. Only one of my friends stuck around from that part of my life. What hurts me most is how they look at me like I'm the Frankenstein monster. And how they disregard everything I say because I'm crazy to them. Most of my family talks to me like I'm a dummy and they're scared to be in the same room with me. Or for those who are more spiritual, they think I'm a witch and that's why I'm punished for life with this disease. Realizing that my family and friends would only accept me again if I would surrender to lifelong medication, I took an overdose of liquid anesthetic. So while it may not be this way for everybody, many bipolar people, once diagnosed, find themselves marginalized and pathologized by society and with a much dimmer future than they had planned staring them in the face. Wouldn't you be angry? Maybe even suicidal? I was helpless and alone and angry and pretty out of myself. They tied me up to a bed to make sure I didn't try that again. Back in the 80s when I was at the University of Toronto, I did two research reports on why normal people commit suicide, not necessarily people with bipolar disorder. And what I found among these so-called normal suicidal people was that the main reason that they wanted to kill themselves was exactly the same as why a bipolar person would want to kill themselves. Infinite hopelessness. In the long run, the worst message you can give to a human being is to tell them that their psychological and spiritual problems are biochemical disorders or diseases because it disempowers them. Dr. Peter Bregan, author of Your Drug May Be Your Problem. So, with this deeper understanding of why people are aggressive and suicidal, maybe we can start to understand this suicide note written by one of our new light beings. I beg for God to please have mercy on my soul. My soul is only the victim of my mind. Please release me of this world that shows no mercy to me and allow my body to lay in the ground. Float my soul to the sky. Forgive me of my sins. I have been in agonizing pain for 12 years. Fortunately for all of us, especially her son, Allison, survived that suicide attempt and actually attributes the survival to a new, more spiritual outlook on life. Allison, I hope you don't mind me stealing a few words from your page at New Light Beings. My internal suffering has saved my soul. I am deeply and madly in love with this soulful ride I experience inside my human shell. So am I, Allison. So am I. Depression is a serious and common mental disorder responsible for the majority of suicides. Uh, but as I already covered, intakes of fruits, vegetables, and naturally occurring antioxidants have been found to be protectively associated with depression. So, they concluded, it may be possible to prevent depression or to lessen its negative effects through dietary intervention. But not so fast. That was a cross-sectional study, meaning a snapshot in time. So you don't know whether the poor dietary pattern precedes the development of depression, or if depression causes poor dietary intake. Uh, depression, and even treatments for depression, can affect appetite and dietary intake. Maybe people who feel crappier just eat crappier instead of the other way around. What you need is a prospective study, a study performed over time where you start out with people who are not depressed and follow them for six years, and those with higher carotenoid levels in their bloodstreams, which is considered a good indicator of fruit and vegetable intake, was associated with a 28% lower risk of becoming depressed within that time. So they conclude that having low blood levels of those healthy phytonutrients may predict the development of new depressive symptoms. But what about suicide? Worldwide, a million people kill themselves every year. In this comparison of European countries, Greece had the lowest rates of suicide. Maybe it's the balmy weather, but maybe it has something to do with their diet. 
10,000 people followed for years, and those following a more Mediterranean diet pattern were less likely to be diagnosed with depression. What was it about the diet that was protective? It wasn't the red wine or the fish. It was the fruit and nuts, and effectively higher plant-to-animal fat ratio, and beans that appeared protective. Conversely, significant adverse trends were observed for dairy and meat consumption. A similar protective dietary pattern was found in Japan. A high intake of vegetables, fruit, mushrooms, and soy products was associated with a decreased prevalence of depressive symptoms. It was not characterized by a high intake of seafood. 100,000 Japanese men and women were followed for up to 10 years, and they didn't find evidence of a protective role of higher fish consumption or those long-chain omega-3s, EPA and DHA, against suicide. In fact, they found a significantly increased risk of suicide among male non-drinkers with high seafood omega-3 intake. Uh, this may have just been due to chance, but a similar result was found in the Mediterranean. High baseline fish consumption, together with an increase in consumption, were associated with an increased risk of mental disorders. One possible explanation could be the mercury content of fish. An accumulation of mercury compounds could increase the risk of depression. We know that mercury in fish can cause neurological damage, such as negative effects on Alzheimer's disease, memory loss, autism, as well as depression. So the increased risk of suicide among persons with a high fish intake might be attributable to the harmful effects of mercury in fish. The big Harvard cohorts found similar results. Hundreds of thousands followed for up to 20 years. No evidence taking fish oil or eating fish lowered risk of suicide, with a trend towards even higher suicide mortality. What about for the treatment of depression? Neither EPA or DHA appeared more effective than just sugar pills. And the same can be said when one puts all the trials done to date together. Uh, we used to think omega-3 supplementation was useful, but several recent studies have tipped the balance the other way. It seems that nearly all the treatment efficacy observed in the published literature may be attributable to publication bias, meaning the trials that showed no benefit tended not to get published at all, and so all one saw was a bunch of positive studies, but only because a bunch of the negative ones were buried. <clears throat> hey, I'm Thomas, and today I'm reporting live from a bathroom in Costa Rica. I'd like to show you a shower that's very popular here in Central America that you, my viewers in Europe and the United States, might not have seen before. It's the electric shower, or as I call it, the suicide shower. Ta-da! Okay, let's have a closer look. Right here... We have the shower head containing the electric uh, heating device. Connected to the shower head are two properly isolated wires um, who are powering the heating. And not close to the wires at all is the, um, is the valve to switch on and off the water. So let's try this out. Um, I'm switching on the water right now. Okay, it's working. Up here we have, uh, my fingers are wet now, but that is not a problem. Uh, and here we have a switch where we can switch the, um, the temperature. Okay, um, it's quite hot now. As you see, whenever we uh, uh, use the switch with our white hands, there is a small electric um, confirmation light within the shower head um, and um, yeah that's about it happy showering everyone <laughs>